Okay, I'm ready. All right, let me see. Uh, do you have the link? There we go. There <laughs> spoke to someone. Uh, let me, uh, I want to actually put it a status on my Facebook. Absolutely, man. I'll start talking. We haven't had anyone quite join okay. us yet. We'll give it a minute to breathe. Looks like we do have do maybe it. one person in. And but they'll there'll be people probably popping in and out. This is really more for the people of the future anyway, although I hope we do get some people joining us in here because I think it's a powerful message we're delivering with this experiment. I'm excited to hear about how it's gone for you so far, if you have anything to share with yeah. us. Yeah, I do actually. Give me one <laughs> second. I figured like, I mean, the fact that day one pretty much produced a, a miracle for me, that tells me a lot that this is going in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, since we're at the beginning, I'll recap this as I probably will do over time, uh, over all these episodes, a quick recap. What we're doing with this fire up your abundance Fibonacci money ritual is we're retuning your imagination to actually be expecting to get money. And when your imagination is the foundation of your subconscious, the whole universe is mental. And basically it's a question of a chicken or the egg scenario. Were you broke on paper first or were you broke in your mind first? So using nature's number one formula for harmonic growth patterns with maximum efficiency, the Fibonacci sequence, we are spending imaginary money on paper every day for like three or four weeks where mm. each day the amount of money we spend in our minds is gonna be more, ramping up based on the Fibonacci sequence. And the point is to really visualize, and you can do this with us, visualize the experience of spending that money, do it on a daily basis, and turn your action into attraction because the <laughs> rich, rich yeah. people are like successful people know this, that it's a mindset that divides the, the classes a lot more than uh, actual tyranny. There is tyranny. Don't get me wrong, but there's nothing. The real secret is there's nothing that stops you from rising, but yourself and the tyranny is in the dictators who tell you that you don't have the power to rise <laughs> or cut mm. you off in some way through uh, toxicity. So it, Pharaoh, are you ready, man? I think that that was a good recap. I am. I am. I am. Absolutely. Um, first of all, thank you for having me again on the second day. Uh, dude, I every time I get on here, I have to say this, because every time I get on here, I just get a rush of energy. And I feel like I feel like I'm feeding off your manifestation energy uh, because I always get this surge that just automatically brings me into a present state of intention. And of divine manifestation so thank you for having me today again day two um so yeah man i just wanted to kick off by uh briefly uh for me man it, i really love the dichotomy of our journey when it comes to this alchemical manifestation journey that we've been on because um you know for you it's it's been a journey of of seeing practically uh, you know how you're seeing your intentions manifest and reveal things right in front of you Whereas for myself, it's been more so of um, ob observing the process to a detailed specific point to where I am able to fine tune and almost kind of treat this entire process like it's a equation or an algorithm. And through, through my present awareness, I'm able to see which variables are being manifested in my life every day. And so I'm, I've been getting better familiar with this this alchemical equation um, that is manifestation and it is setting your intention and allowing those things to come to us and to allow those things to step into our present moments and then for us to walk into divine timing and claim those things. So that's been a very, very big thing for me. Um, one of the things that I kind of want to dive into today was time. Time has been on my mind so much as of recent uh, when it comes to this journey of manifestation for me, because what I'm realizing is that time has been completely against us this entire time because our lack of awareness of time, you know, and I, I believe that we are a slave to time when we don't when we don't know how time works and we don't flow to the natural synchronicity of time. Here's what I mean by that. I've realized that in this journey where I have been able, I'm kind of stepping into my, my master alchemist role where I'm really able to set my intention, speak what I want into existence, and then watch as those things come to me. But what I'm paying attention to 
is the timing of which those things come to me, the timing of which the universe reveals to me my resources that are going to draw me closer to what I'm trying to manifest. That's what I'm realizing the most in this journey because what I kind of am beginning to summarize is that the matrix system, the 3D material realm has almost brainwashed us, programmed us to make us think that we have to work a lot faster than we actually do. And that causes us to at times miss what the universe has for us just because we're running right past it. And so I've had to learn how to deprogram myself to just slow down. You know, I've had day after day where I'm working on this Venus project and I'll have days where I'll have so many things that I want to get lined up, but spirit will just stop me and say, don't do a single thing today. Take this time to tend to yourself today. And I had to work, I had to resist and, and work against that because my natural programming is if I want to get something, I have to hustle. If I want to get something, I have I to work fast for it. Like you've really, Absolutely, this is something I'm, do, I'm dealing with too, man. I've actually, the studio you see me standing in right now, I have torn apart and put back together like three or four times in the last month, like started over on the way things were organized and set up because that's a reflection mm. of my, my psyche, my space. And I'm changing that fast. And now, now the yeah. space, not only is the perfect place for me to cl flow creatively on the computer, on uh, my art, I have an art desk separate uh, to do my actual graphics and then space for my instruments and then room for me and my uh, special lady to do yoga in this room and still have room. It's yeah. like, it yeah. took that. I had to be willing to be like, okay, I know I just did this, but wow, spirit's telling me that you need this space to be in a certain arrangement and it's not it right now. And it, you need to deal with that. <laughs> it's exactly like that. Yeah. Take the time out for yeah. you. Yeah, absolutely, brother. But I've it's, been more productive I mean, in that time with podcasts, even though it's like I have more time. It's really weird. I don't know how to describe mm -hmm. it. It's like the time has expanded. It, it's expanded because we slowed it down. And what that's what I've realized is that once you can break the 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 slavery that comes through time, then we can then take advantage of time itself. It's like once once we become aware of time, we begin to be able to control it. And that controlling it is allowing spirit to talk to us and to speak through us and give us the divine instructions that are really guiding us to where we want to be. But the time that it takes to be able to hear those instructions come from time being slowed down and us being able to be in the present moment to where we're able to hear those instructions. So it makes it seem like time is being slowed down, but the reality of it is we're just stepping into eternity and eternity being a space where time doesn't have to exist and that's what happens when we step into this present moment space, you know? So I'm just realizing and it's so beautiful because this space is so new to us, bro. It's so new. So we're, we're learning how to play around in this new world. And the, the, the rules to this new world are, first of all, slow down. I want to get into like, that's the dirt of this, man. Can we get into the dirt here? Like, absolutely. Okay, so Go ahead. One bro. of my biggest life enslavements has been to video games. And that's not saying video mm. games are evil. It's like everything else. It's like... The time part is why I'm bringing this up, okay? Because, bro, you're talking about, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're really you're talking about being a slave to time instead of letting time synchronistically just work out for you. I find myself like, mm. in my past, I would be thinking about games or when I used to smoke cigarettes, I'd be thinking about when my next cigarette was. When I was thinking about games, I'd be like, when am I gonna get off work to go play this game? Hey, what's up, Amber? Mm. She joined us in the chat, what's up? So hey, what I found is that by paying attention to when like I'm on a walk or something and a video game that I'd like to play pops in my head and my mind starts trying to like take me through imagining playing it and thinking about it and all this, um, putting pressure on me to go do it later in a way while I could actually just be walking and enjoying the scenery and, and following my breath. Mm -hmm. At that point, mm -hmm. I, I've like getting to that point of perception now lets me let go of it when it comes up and then like every now and then I still play games but they don't they don't seem to mess up my time in the same way like mm. I, pl I play them a bit but in balance like I won't say how much or how when there's not like a, a strict rule about it I just do it when it comes up as the right thing to do because I've done all the mm -hmm. stuff that should come first as opposed to like 
rushing home to turn on the TV to watch the next episode of the show you're watching on Netflix as soon as you get off work instead of doing something like stretching or like making dinner or you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? It's that real estate that it takes up real estate in your consciousness, in your mind when you're not even doing it. And that's part of what slows you down so bad in time. You know, it's funny you bring up, you use the word slow down. And it's interesting because one of the things that I believe my spirit guy is talking to me right now, but one of the things that I'm getting channeled right now is if you think about animals and you think about like a lion and think about how instinctually a lion is able to perform when it's crunch time, when it's on the prowl and it's looking for that that prey and it finds it and it, it stalks it and it hunts it. It doesn't think about what to do. It just does it. It goes right into the present moment and it is able to just react. And that react, then that, that flow that, that that lion is in is what puts that lion in the most optimal state to be able to perform. And so what it what it does and what this like instinctual phase of reality does for us as, as human beings is that when we can turn off the mind, when we can fall into our instinctual state of being, our natural state of being, what we're doing is we're telling the universe, I trust you. We're telling the universe, I don't need my brain right now because I know that when I show up in the present moment, everything is going to be set up for me to the point where I will be able to, you know, um, you know, to destroy my prey, which our prey in this particular case is our intentions and the things that we're trying to manifest. So as you turn your brain off and return back to the present moment, like you were saying, you know, you were able to enjoy your walk and see the beauty that was all around you when you weren't thinking about the video games. And then somehow you were able to enjoy that walk but then later on, still have time to play your video game. So you were able to get the abundance that was in the present moment from being able to turn your brain off as opposed to overthinking and then only having to choose from, you know, either enjoying the present moment or thinking about the video game and actually being able to play it. So stepping into this realm of abundance is, is present moment living where you don't have to choose either or. You can choose to allow the universe to just custom make your itinerary for your life and just flow and show it's up. It's so much less so stressful. You're awesome. not like, see, I get so jealous and guard my time. You know what it's like, Aries, brother. Like, you want to just rush on and get to the next thing. And I'm like, quit slowing me down. But uh, mm-hmm. I ran into somebody. <laughs> I was on a walk today. And I ran into somebody that needed, needed like 40 minutes of my time to, like, talk about the creation in a really deep way. Mm-hmm. Some random stranger that we passed by, you know? And... I allowed that and it was beautiful and I never like, it didn't mess up the flow of my day. It changed what Mm. I thought my plans were, but it did not hurt me. It actually was like probably really a relevant and obviously a really relevant and important synchronicity that needed to happen. And I, I just wanted to say like, I allowed that. And in the past easily could have just Mm. been like, no, I got to hustle. See you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for saying hi. You know? Absolutely. And and, oh God, that that just, it's really anchoring into me present moment right now because, you know, I I envision a world where, you know, we won't have to plan. I envision a world where collectively we began to trust the universe so much and we realized that the universe is the real planner. The universe has been planning everything. The universe plans the seasons, the universe plans, you know, the, 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 the geographic shifts and the and the, uh, the the plate tectonics the it i mean everything down to the seeds that are growing in the grass right now everything is being coordinated by the universe so it's like you know the pride that i've noticed that we've had as human beings the pride that we are the most highly intellectual beings on this planet i believe that has been our downfall this entire time because it's made us think that we're to rely on this giant thing in our head that we call our brain when the reality of it is the brain was only designed to retain and collect information. It was not designed to make decisions. That's the universe's job. So when we can just really, really anchor that in and realize that that algorithm of trying to plan things was designed for the universe who does it without even having to think Which about still it. That's you. the You're not giving up sovereignty. You're, this is what sovereignty. Hey, you're not this giving up sovereignty. sovereignty. You're, you're being synchronized. Like the universe knows what you want more than you do because you are the universe's organism. Like you are a part of the universe. The universe is not, well, I guess it is a part of you, but we that, that is the oversoul of who we are. That is the, you know, we are the players on the football field. And so, you know, when, when a lot of people don't know this, but like when the quarterback is on the field, you know, you know, the coach is not the one calling the play. There's actually a, you know, a, a radio receptor in the helmet that is being uh, called from the person who's in the skybox. 
you know so the the sky box is the, the person in the sky box is the person who has the overview of what's going on in the field the things that you can't see right in front of you because you have this tunnel vision of your intentions so the the, the person in the sky box is able to give you the plan and all you have to do is show up and execute. You don't have to worry about what the defense is doing. You don't have to worry about what the opposition is doing. You don't have to worry about what play you're going to run. All you have to do is follow the instructions and do what you are designed to do, and you will be right where the ball needs you to be. And that's what we're doing in this fifth dimensional realm. We're just showing up and setting our intentions and allowing the universe to bring those things to us and execute those things in the present moment. Dude, this is such powerful intel. I'm t I'm serious. It's so powerful. What we're talking about, that's the, that's the crown chakra right there is that is uh, having the earpiece in your helmet that gives you the the d detailed Ooh, intelligence like from the upstairs crew, which is your helping beings, your guardians, you know, like there's a whole you have an entire team. You think that you on the field being the quarterback of your life are the only person that has something invested in this gigantic art project mm -hmm. that took literally billions of years to even develop to get to the point where you could experience this moment i mean give me a break mm -hmm. you're not the like mm -hmm. it's all you yeah but there's parts of you that are so vast and beyond that bring you these synchronicities and trusting it and opening up to it that's what this whole fibonacci money ritual is about i mean totally this is it has a lot to do with sovereignty because in this dimension financial security is a form of sovereignty in that you have the freedom to do what's right at all times if you've got financial freedom you can pretty much like literally help anybody that crosses your path because you're liberated in that way mm -hmm. bro i i agree with that so much um something else that's coming into me right now um is the number wow so, oh my goodness. Okay, my spirit guy is, oh my guy is on fire right now. Um, so the number 144 has been coming up to me uh, a lot lately. And um, it's interesting because now, I guess it was designed to, to be presented in this podcast because what's coming into me right now is that there's uh, 1,440 minutes in a day. And, you know, we always hear that time is money. And so I wonder what would happen if we began to look at each minute of the day as if that was the actual currency that we were gaining. And so by being able to realize that we have access to $1,400 worth of currency in the form of time, then we can just sit here and know that if I am just sit, if I am just here present, I'm making money. I don't have to be doing something. And it kind of goes back to what we were saying yesterday when we were saying that, you know, breaking the illusion or not yesterday, but a few days ago, uh, breaking the illusion that activity equals productivity. Well, you know, we're, what we're talking about today is the exact opposite. It's like, no, it's not about always work, work, work. It's about being present enough to know when to work and when to sit still, because that's where the true currency lies. So sometimes just sitting still all day long is giving the universe enough time to coordinate your next day to allow you to only have to work one to two hours, but be the equivalency of, have, of working a 40 hour week because you were efficient because you were just present. That's one of the biggest things that I really want to drive home today on this podcast is it's more valuable for you to sit still sometimes, majority of times, than for you to overexert your energy into the creation process and run faster than you're supposed to, missing all the blessings that the universe had or lined up for you and all you had to do was walk and be aware and say, thank you for providing these resources for me. You know, when a lion wakes up in the morning, it does not have to think about how to be a lion. It's able to wake up and decide whatever the heck it wants to do that day. And somehow it finds its food, it finds its water, it finds its, its mates, it finds everything just by being what it's supposed to be. You know, so once that happens for us, I can't imagine the global shift in consciousness that is going to happen, that is happening. Oh man, oh man. Uh, I know we said 15 minutes, let's keep it going for another minute or two I, in case my homie finds uh, time to call in and then he can tell us about doing this himself because what we're doing is spending that time, which is currency, time and attention is your spiritual currency, spending it on yourself instead of on whatever thing is colonizing your imagination in that moment. Like I brought up video games, I brought up Netflix, TV and, and other forms and mediums of art that are entertaining are not in themselves evil, but you have to be aware you're spending money on that. That's like the time you spend Absolutely. is money spent in a, in a true way. And also time you spend 
um, doing certain things that, that are out of balance that you might even think that you need to force to happen, like exercise, you can spend money on exercise in a sense, like <laughs> by overdoing it, overexerting it. Like, would you, isn't it a sacrifice to your happiness and well being if you miss out on some important thing with your family because you thought, well, I didn't get to go to the gym today and I needed to, so I, I sacrificed meeting the family for my health. There's always like, if you can trust yourself to be in flow with taking care of yourself on a daily basis and being in divine timing, then you won't need to worry that you didn't go today because it's not like you're never going to go again. You're not going to go on like a four month streak of no exercise. Of course not. You're going to be in tune with your body and be like, even while you're hanging around people, you're going to just start dropping into stretches and stuff. And then you're influencing them about how they see time. Like, is it just empty calories when we hang out? Are we also stretching? Are we vibing? You know, like, are we, are we building together in our minds and our imagination? I see, I think Chris okay. has joined us here and called in, man. Can you say hi and we can see if we can hear you? I can. Let me uh, turn down the music a little bit as well. And it's a little quiet, so you might have to speak up kind of. But I wanted to hear a little bit about your experiences doing this uh, money ritual with us. And thanks for calling in, brother. Yeah, totally. Uh, I'm on day three right now to the 3,000 mark. And well, first off, the first day I was thinking about putting down a walk a water filter for my sink. And before I even fill out the list, I saw that you shared the one that you found. And I was like, that's amazing. That's exactly what I needed. Wow. And so that was like a dull thing for you and me that we both needed it was super cool when one finds abundance but, um, we all find it <laughs> i was just thinking the same thing i was like we're all on the same frequency baby so the thing that you need is the thing that i have <laughs> yeah what other stuff did you buy They're super cool um well since that was already taken care of um i bought um, day one, I bought a brand new laptop, and since I had a thousand dollars, I splurged and got a more expensive laptop <laughs> because I mean, because laptops are the way to go, especially me since I do a lot of editing and work on computers and stuff. That I can take that laptop and go anywhere. I could be out in nature and edit photos or whatever I need to. Yeah, just get a good try. So Don't I did put that. it on your actual lap. <laughs> that emf <laughs> get some organite slapped on there for sure yeah you know you know what's interesting I that, um i i noticed that um and i i was doing this as well when we explain um you know why we spent something um i i, I feel like we're in it we're entering into this space now where the abundance is so apparent we almost don't have to even explain why we decided to make the purchase simply outside of because we chose to and that because it's ours and we're entitled to it you know so it, it's like you know you, you almost don't even have to explain you know why you decided to upgrade your laptop you felt like you deserve an upgraded laptop so you claimed that and the universe is bringing that to you well then the other thing yeah. i'll say though on the entitlement thing and i know this isn't what you meant but i just had a big revelation about this today while i was on that walk that i brought up was i just picked up a few pieces of trash only a few because i've only got two hands while i was on the walk and i'm like one thing we're not entitled to is to just waste and throw away and uh, defile and pollute and destroy the beauty. And what you want that laptop for, which you don't have to explain to us, of course, but it's because, you know, you're going to create beauty with it. You're going to bring more into your life with it. So, of course, it's a just thing to want. But we also, you know, we're not actually buying real laptops. This is imaginary right now, but we are entering a phase where we're going to start upgrading all kinds of gear in our lives. And I brought up... Uh, at the beginning that I had rearranged my office a bunch, I had to throw away some stuff or recycle, I should say. And you can recycle electronics as well. And that's important. I just want to keep in mind that as we're drawing in this abundance, we have to be mindful of the outflow of both giving things that we no longer need to others if they work, but also be responsible for what happens to those things whenever they're no longer serving us in a sense that they need to be disposed of properly or recycled or upcycled or, or what have you. And I know you're mindful of that, Chris, but I just wanted to make that point to all of us. We're not like, yes, we're entitled to what we know our soul's destiny 
would be fulfilled by when it comes to tools and material objects, but we're not entitled to just to destroy and waste and be locusts. I know you agree with that and don't need me to say that, Pharaoh, but I just want to say that for everybody. Absolutely. Well, th thank you for thank you for addressing that because a lot of people are stepping into this dimension for the first time. And that may have been something that needed to be stated because, you know, even kind of going back into nature, it's like, you know, when something dies, it, it's not nothing goes to waste in nature, you know, especially even in, in permaculture. It's like when something dies, it gets decomposed and the and the, the, the soil now has nutrients that it can be provided for. And that soil is able to cultivate the next flower or the next tree. And then that tree is able to grow and produce fruit that is able to cultivate the animal. So thank you for bringing that up because again, this fifth dimensional reality is a reality of interconnectedness where every, like I said, you always have what I need and I always uh, have what someone else needs and someone whatever someone else needs is what I have. We, we're all connected together in this ecosystem. We're all coming together forming that one body and that, and everything in the body is used for some purpose. That's what makes the abundance work. Exactly. Having that flow of like, I don't need this food processor anymore, but I know someone that could use one because they're trying to get into cooking for themselves more. And yeah, it doesn't work perfectly, but here's the trick to make it work. And you let them know and you give it to them and that's the abundance showing up. Like that's, we have to be the bridge for it. And so we're, <laughs> we're, we're putting it down right now, putting the bridge down by doing this money ritual. And I like that. We have Agreed. to be the abundance. You, you guys, before we wrap this up, uh, both of you want to give us a few more things that you thought were really relevant that you decided to spend on. You don't have to like tell us your whole list because we'll spend a lot of time in this series talking about imaginary things we're buying. But uh, hit me with hit me with some of your uh, top top purchases. Well, for for myself yeah. and what it's like to imagine uh, them too. Yeah, I'll let we'll let uh, Pharaoh go first. Yeah, really, really quickly. I mean, I, a new phone for one. The the new Note. I am really trying to take my uh, my my vlog. Um, I haven't been able to. I haven't wanted to post the videos that I want to post and in, on Instagram and things like that and YouTube because my phone quality currently is not where I want it to be. Um, so I purchased a new phone that will allow me to be able to take clear pictures and have clear videos. Um, and then second, um, I, I have a pretty. I have like a about thousand dollar budget that I would like to have for. The, um, the Backwoods Music Festival, um, just because I have a lot of people that I would love to be there and just bless and provide for and show them that abundance that we are walking into. So I would love to have the funds that will allow me to splurge for other people there. Um, and so I, I went ahead and, and already put that into my bank account um, and already booked my ticket, my VIP ticket um, to, to go ahead and, and be a part of that experience. So those are my two big things. Awesome. Yeah. Um some of my big things are um, I actually um, a few months ago I got a Reiki session and I have cerebral palsy and it was super life changing like just the way it felt to get my first um, Reiki session and wow. I haven't been able to um, pay for another one or start going regularly so I put down um, money for a regular Reiki session for myself. And then the rest of it, um, my mom just went through a divorce and it has a lot of lawyer fees. So I mentally gave the rest to her to um, help take a chunk of all the fees off of, for her. Hmm. It's cool how when there's no pressure about the giving or the spending, because we know there's going to be more. And in this case, it's because we're imagining it. How naturally we can't even think of like, I don't even know what I want. I just know that this person I love could use help. So I want to, I want to help with that. And I think that's really admirable, man. I happen to know about your personal story because we're close friends and you, <laughs> I want you to know that you may not realize it at all times, but you are the light worker that is born into that family to bring healing to all of those people. And your level of consciousness you've got for a young person is definite evidence that you're of a star seed origin or something along those lines. And thank you for coming on with us and sharing with us. I hope you come join us again in, in future streams as we go down the road on this uh, month long process. Yeah, totally. Thank I you so much. You. And thank you for sharing that uh, that Reiki experience as well. That was that was pretty powerful. 
Chris, maybe you can hang yeah, out with me and go down to see human experience at some point in April, like I'm hoping to do as Amber's talking about in the chat and we can get you some really professional grade Reiki there. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. You can help me man the booth. Oh man. Yeah. I, I love helping in reverse. <laughs> it's in reverse is it sets a big thing that you're doing that you're being a voice for this conscious shift that's happening right now. And I just, I love being a part of it. So I would love to go down and help you with that booth. I love having you as a friend and, and a brother. And it's extra cool that we live so close next to each other that we can do a lot of stuff together. Thank, and thank you for coming on here again. It's a, uh, it's, it makes it so much more magical, right? Pharaoh to have someone else that's doing this with us. Brother, it, it, again, I, I get I get so much energy. Uh, I can't stop moving when I when we when this connection comes together and these vibrations synchronize. I mean, and it's interesting because I, when you were speaking, um, you know, you 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 I don't know if it's a speech tick or you, you just speak it. But I know you say, you know, you at the end of talking about what we're manifesting, you'll say and I know it's not real, but I'm, I'm at the point where it's real to me, even when you say it's not real, when when he uh, when, when Chris spoke and said that he gave the money to his mom, you know, I felt the feeling of as if he had given that money to his mom. You know, I felt the satisfaction of like, man, that was a good deed you did as if it has happened because every thought and intention that we have, it creates that world that what you're thinking is already real. So we just haven't matched the vibrational frequency yet, but your mom has already received that abundance, that resource. So I already anchor in the feeling of satisfaction, knowing that she's provided for and the feeling of satisfaction from your Reiki sessions and the feeling of satisfaction from being at Backwoods. I'm feeling that right now. So I, 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 I'm so grateful to just even be able to hear the process of manifestation in you guys' life because it's very much real in mine. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I think the only reason I even would say it's not real is just so everyone knows they don't need to go blow their entire bank account <laughs> right right now <laughs> to do this <laughs> but it is right if you discretion advised like don't go blow your money I say, <laughs> use wisdom i say this all the time uh, but if you have an imaginary conversation with someone and people do this all the time when they're like having beef you are like i would say this and then they would say that and then i would be like bam bam and you have this like fight <laughs> in your head you know what i'm talking about yeah. right? we all used to do that or some of us yeah, still absolutely. sometimes do it absolutely well, you can do the same. That's real, by the way. You're literally like sparking something up with them in the psychic astral realm because they're not disconnected from you. We're all one. Surprise. <laughs> you can do the same thing <laughs> in the positive, even with people that aren't even in their bodies anymore and have left the, the plane. So uh, that what you're talking about with it being very real with Chris's gift to his mom, I, gr I would have to say I agree that on a astral, on a psychic level, it is real, and what we're what you're doing is actually anchoring in the energy of as if you had done the act in 3D. But in your brain, if you were scanning your brain as you imagined doing that, or if you had a dream about doing it, the same centers would light up. It would be the same exact thing to your consciousness, and that's what really matters here. Mm. I, I, I really before we go, I know we gotta wrap things up. I wanted to really address Adam's comment. I just saw this, but he said he, you know, he felt like he hustles and I, he rushed. He said I, I feel like I hustle and I rush my way in and out of a lot of situations. Feels like trying too hard over and over again and repeat, um, brother. Like I, I, I can't stress this enough. It's not supposed to be hard for us. It's this our manifestations and the, and the goals and dreams that we want. That, that hustle mentality, that's the 3D mentality. When we're vibrating at a very, very low frequency, we have to exert more energy just to hit mediocrity. But when you raise your vibrations up, you're moving a lot faster. And so you have to slow down and be in time to match the vibrations of your manifestation. So brother, I'll say about Adam too, what I'll say about, him, about this brother is that he's got so much vibrant energy and creative power. It's just flowing and blasting out of him. And so what I'd say is yeah, the container that that energy needs to flow into isn't a band or music or project or a friend or a relationship or a group. It is you. So like the passion that you have for music and the passion you have for life and sure. friendship, channel that into your health, channel that into things that bring mm. you into your body and into the present moment with a uh, real real calmness and stillness and you'll find yes. that things that you were out there looking for start coming to you you will become the attractor mm -hmm. instead of the the questor <laughs> 
<laughs> right on, brother. I hope. I mean, that's not medical advice, but that's what I would do if I was you. And I love you, brother. Thank you. Well, when you think about it, though, um, when we talk about anchoring in our manifestations. The feeling is what really anchors it in. So imagine this. If you're, have, if you're feeling stressed out, if you're feeling like you're overexerting energy, then you're obviously, then you obviously have not received what it is that you're feeling in the astral realm. Because if you if you received it already, you will be reflecting and anchoring in the feeling of that satisfaction. So focus on creating that feeling of satisfaction right now because that confirms that you actually have received it and that it's already on its way. That's genius. Chris, uh, you got anything to say for us before we start signing this thing off? Uh no. I would just like to say earlier when you said um, having conversations with people in your head psychically, that does work because anytime I am ecstatic or have an idea and I need to talk to you about somebody and I, I, I don't have my phone or I can't contact somebody to talk about it with, I'm always like psychically like talking to you. Mm. or Haley about it and so you two are like my go-to like psychic buddy conversation which is great because and i might that, be so busy in three, like, i might be too busy in 3d to call or text but like i can hold space and anchor in that uh manifestation with you because i believe in it and then when we do come together in the the physical world you catch me up on all the stuff that my psychic body already has been told about and so i vibe with it and Ooh. click with it really fast and then i'm bouncing ideas back with you and we're collaborating and brainstorming and, and switching things up and it's i know exactly mm. what you're talking about i do that with even teachers that i've never met in real life <laughs> people that i check out their videos and shit. transdimensional living brother we're able to split ourselves up now we're able to be present with our physical bodies while our astral bodies are able to be connecting and doing our energy work, while our consciousness is connected to source and able to anchor in those downloads for our manifestations. Like we are in multiple places at one time. This is awesome. I, I love this. Gosh, I, I'm kind of blown away by the depth of the revelations here. I know we said we were going to do 15 minutes, but I bet this will happen again where we accidentally do almost 40. But let's wrap it up and uh, <laughs> go take good care of ourselves, guys. And thanks everyone that joined us in the chat. If there's anything left unanswered in the chat, guys, let me know. And thanks for being with us. We're going to do this again tomorrow, hopefully. And we're going to keep attempting to do it every day without being slaves to time and just letting it flow synchronistically. And we'll throw the uh, number out in the chat again next time so that someone else can call other than Chris or we'll have Chris back because I love having him doing this experiment with us. Thank you, man. Yes, peace and love, balance. Yeah, wholeness and balance vibrations. <laughs> All right, you got anything to close us with, Pharaoh, before I hit the end key? Man, peace, blessings, abundance, wisdom, empowerment. Just anchor it all down. I love you guys. Um, so grateful. Remember, gratuity is the final step in your anchoring process. Be grateful as if you already have received it. Feel the feeling of gratuity. Yeah, just like let yourself have that thought. I win. Just be constantly, yes. <laughs> I constantly think that I, it literally pops in my yes. head all the time. I win. And I'm like, I mean, I, I game, game's not over. I like that. Game's not over, homie. <laughs> but it's still a good feeling to anchor in. All right, we'll get out of here. Thanks for joining us, everyone, in, in the chat. And gosh, I'm excited for next day. I haven't spent my imaginary money yet today, but that's what I'm going to do soon. And I've got all kinds of good ideas. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Wholeness, everyone. Peace.